Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Maestros or Grixis reanimator deck, trying to bring back its various mythic rare creatures from the graveyard ahead of schedule, thanks to either a Graveyard Shift, which we can play at instant speed if we have 5 or more mana values among cards in our graveyard, or Return Upon the Tide, which can also be foretold, so it's a nice 2 mana play in the early game to let us cast it for 4 mana instead of 5, so we can already bring back one of these creatures on turn 4, which can be quite powerful. And among the creatures we're trying to reanimate. We have two copies of All Seeing Arbiter, a 5-4 avatar with flying that when it enters a battlefield or attacks lets us draw two and then discard, so provides a nice bit of card advantage, and whenever we discard a card, can be with the Arbiter or with another effect, then target creature an opponent controls gets minus x minus o until end of turn, where x is the number of different mana values among cards in our graveyard, and our deck has quite a few different mana values if we take a look at it. We've got plenty of twos, threes, a couple fours, fives, and then then 6 and 7, and then lands count as a 0 mana value in the graveyard, so we can pretty easily get to 4 or 5 mana values in our graveyard, and then Arbiter can shrink down opposing creatures, and if we get multiple copies of Arbiter in play, or maybe start copying it with the reflection of Kiki Jiki, we can quickly take control of the board. Then we also have two copies of Kairi, the Swirling Sky, a 6-6 six -six legendary dragon spirit with flying, a ward 3, so pretty difficult to kill with spot removal, and when Swirling Sky dies, we can either return any number of target null land permanents with total mana value 6 or less to their owner's hands, which doesn't happen all that often, but can be useful in a pinch, but more often than not we're gonna mill 6 cards, which also sets up future reanimation spells, and then we can return up to 2 instant and or sorcery cards from our graveyard to our hand, so we just get back a reanimation spell, which can get back or Swirling Sky, so that's a loop that's very difficult for a lot of decks to overcome, and then at the same time we get back a second spell to also pull ahead on board. Then at 7 mana we have two copies of Toxrel the Corrosive, which shines against go wide decks that have a lot of tokens and low toughness creatures, as we will quickly wipe them away thanks to our slime counters and turn them into slugs. We've got two copies of Titan of Industry, which is the only creature in our deck that we cannot easily hardcast. We can technically get there eventually with some treasure tokens, but for the most part we're trying to discard it and then reanimate it, and it's quite powerful as a 7-7 with Reach and Trample, often putting a shield counter somewhere and making a 4-4 Rhino token, but can also take out artifacts or enchantments and gain life if needed. And also very nice to copy with our reflection of Kiki Jiki as a non-legendary creature that can attack right away and also leave behind a rhino token and maybe a shield counter. And then finally two copies of Lord Xander the Collector, which shines in the more controlling matchups as it will make the opponent discard a bunch of cards when it enters, can mill the opponent out by attacking, and then when it dies can also force the opponent to sacrifice a bunch of their permanents. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, our early setup includes of course Foretelling Return Upon the Tide, also have 4 copies of Tainted Indulgence, which in the early game will let us draw 2 and then discard, to set up our reanimation spells by discarding a large creature, but then in the late game once we get enough mana values in the graveyard, it just turns into 2 mana draw 2, which is quite powerful. Then we've got two copies of Power Word Kill as a cheap removal spell that doesn't cost us any life, unlike Infernal Grasp, even though there are quite a few angels and dragons in the metagame. At 3 mana, the most important card by far is Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which is an all-star, not only helping us ramp with a shaman that leaves behind treasure tokens to maybe set up a turn 4 graveyard shift, and then it also helps us discard and draw with a second chapter to discard our expensive creatures, and then Reflection of Kiki Jiki, also quite powerful with cards like All Seeing Arbiter and Titan of Industry that we can copy. And then we also have a few copies of Prismari Command, which is quite flexible, can also help us discard, maybe make some treasure. Corpse Explosion is our sweeper of choice alongside Toxrill, as we can maybe exile an expensive creature from our graveyard and deal damage to each creature equal to its power. And then at two copies of Maestro's Charm, which is also quite flexible, can maybe use it as removal, or can use it to dig for one of our reanimation spells while putting an expensive creature in the graveyard. And then two copies of Big Score, which is another discard effect that can also maybe help us hardcast some of our more expensive creatures by just making those two treasure tokens. And then a mana base has four copies of Xander's Lounge, we've got one of each basic land, and a few creature lands, Hive and Hall of the Storm Giants, as those don't really interfere with casting a turn two indulgence, unlike Den of the Bugbear. And then all 12 pathways and one of each of the Innistrad dual lands. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. 
Okay, we're on the draw. We'll need to find some red mana for reflection, but indulgence digs pretty deep. And we're on the draw, so I'm hopeful. And then we'll need some uh, reanimation spells as well. So I need some help off the top, but we've got uh, creatures to reanimate at least. Opponent on an enchantment deck, looks like Naya. At least no Runeforge Champion on 3. Kami of Transients. Opponent stuck on 2 lands. Can discard against runes, what do we prefer? Titan seems okay since it can maybe get rid of an enchantment when it comes back. When our opponent's stuck on two lands, Lord Xander's also somewhat tempting. And then Toxrill, always powerful, but we may be able to hardcast Toxrill thanks to big score. So I'll get rid of Titan. And then play Fable. And that can also help us discard more stuff next turn. Just killing the Naturalist with Power Ward Kill. Also an option. Rune of Sustenance hits Kami. So they might keep a 3-3 on defense, which we may or may not want to kill. Opponent gets in for 6. Alright, set her on the beatdown plan. And yeah, we probably discard at least one more large creature. How about Lord Xander? Because we don't have a reanimation spell yet. So we may want to dig for one. So maybe discarding Indulgence is also reasonable. Although I can play it alongside Power Ward Kill to be efficient. Although if we attack with our Goblin Shaman we'll have 5 mana so I can play another Fable. So I don't think we'll have time for Indulgence necessarily. Okay, so no reanimation spell yet. Can attack, play Fable and then still Power Ward Kill. Or we can big score, and then still power word kill, and that also sets up maybe Toxrill. Yeah, we're definitely attacking with our Shaman. Feels like we have to keep up a little bit of interaction to make sure we don't die, and then ideally be able to play Toxrill next turn. So killing the Naturalist before they get the advantage of the mana discount seems worthwhile. And then... Yeah, what are we looking at? Probably big score main phase. Discarding Think Hall, since we want untapped lands. Alright, All Seeing Arbiter is also just a decent card. And so if I Power Word kill, next turn... I don't have the mana for Toxrill, but I have the mana for Arbiter. Which may still be good enough, unless I guess our Shaman attacks, then we can still Toxrill. So let's kill Naturalist now, I think. And then we're not in any immediate danger of dying. And then at the very least Arbiter can help stabilize. Commune finds a land. And touch the spirit realm, gets rid of our goblin. Essentially flickering it, but against tokens that's as good as killing it. Alright, so we're at 8. And then Arbiter, also good combo with Reflection of Kiki Jiki. And let's see here. Currently have 4 different mana values in Graveyard, including 0, 2, 7 and 4. So discarding a 3 would add one more. Or I can just get rid of a land. What's our plan for next turn? Probably just double 3-drop. So getting rid of a land seems fine. Shrink down Kami. Prismari Command can also enable the All-Seeing Arbiter and shrink something else down. Another touch of Spirit Realm, unfortunately, will exile the Arbiter. So opponents 
with quite a bit of interaction for a uh, Naya enchantment deck. Could accept the trade, which I'm not opposed to since Reflection's not doing a whole lot right now. And we just need to buy time. There we go, return upon the tide. Can get back our Titan, which gets rid of Dungeon of Spirit Realm. And then, what else? Maybe make a Rhino token. And that should stabilize us once again. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And uh, this hand I don't think is going to cut it. Could use a couple more lands, but we're also pretty slow at discarding a creature. Don't have any reanimation spells. Take a mulligan. Alright, this I can keep. And then one shift can probably go to the bottom. And then Fable, if uh, the opponent doesn't answer, or Goblin Shaman, will eventually be able to make a treasure, discard the Arbiter as well, and Toxril now too. And maybe set up a turn 4 Graveyard Shift, if all goes according to plan. Opponent on a black control deck. So it can be a pretty grindy matchup, which is usually okay for us since that means we can keep getting back creatures that get destroyed, while their opponent does have Hive in play, which can maybe mess with our graveyard. Could see a deadly dispute here. So, we'll have to wait and see if the Shaman survives, if we get a chance to graveyard shift next turn already. Ooh, go blank. That's also quite rough, as that exiles cards. So... I think we're still gonna aim to hopefully reanimate a creature next turn. Toxrill doesn't seem incredibly helpful right now, so that can maybe get exiled. And then the question is... Do I maybe keep Titan? Can put a shield counter on it? Or do I keep Arbiter? Or do we want a second Fable? Uh, I think Titan will be good. Arbiter, maybe a little bit less so. So it's really Fable versus Arbiter. And I think I hang on to Fable, but it's a close call. And then we still need to draw an untapped land for a graveyard shift to work out. And our Shaman has to survive. Okay, opponent's got all the answers. So now... If I discard Titan, our opponent can exile it with the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. But if I discard both, then I guess I can reanimate at least one of them. Even though Toxroll doesn't do much without any creatures to kill. So yeah, that's rough, but I think we still go for it. Alternatively, could have kept one in hand to discard with the second Fable. And only discard it one but also want to keep digging to hit our land drops. So we'll see if they activate Hive, or if they go for a different approach. Meeting Massacre for two kills our Shaman. So now an untapped land still lets us reanimate our Titan. And yeah, we'll get rid of Corpse Explosion Hall since I really want this to happen. There we go. So don't have enough to play our Graveyard Shift as an instant, so we'll have to do it now. Get back Titan. And then definitely one shield counter. And then question is... Do we destroy the treasure? Do we make a Rhino token? Kind of like the Rhino token for added pressure, even though Blood on the Snow could be in our future. So maybe denying the extra treasure is worth it. Yeah, close call. Let's go for Rhino and Shield Counter. And then, best case scenario, we get to untap with Reflection so we can start copying Titan of Industry. Which was maybe a reason to get rid of the treasure token so Blood on the Snow cannot happen. 
and Reflection is more likely to survive. Although I guess we'll get another Reflection pretty soon here. It's gonna be a Massacre for four. Okay. And we can almost cast the Swirling Sky. So worth it to play our land out now. And then Swirling Sky also threatens to maybe get back our Graveyard Shifts. So we'll see. I Twitch can maybe chump to remove the shield counter of Titan of Industry, but if I get to untap, Reflection copying Titan looks awesome. But they've got another Infernal Grasp to kill it. And a Shambling Ghast. Okay, return upon the tide. Can get back one of our creatures as well. So I don't feel bad attacking with Titan and potentially losing the shield counter. And then we'll play a Swirling Sky. I Twitch may be learning for... A removal spell for Titan. Yep, Necrotic Fumes. They could also exile Swirling Sky instead. But we still have a Toxtril we can maybe reanimate. And I guess could have gone for reanimate Toxtril, not attack with Titan to keep the shield counter. So we have that option. So they cannot pay the ward for Swirling Sky, so they'll exile Titan instead. That's fine. And then our plan is attack and bring back Toxtril. Reason not to attack is that we would get a slug token from Toxtril. Um, which is, yeah, certainly an argument for just passing the turn. Although if they have another Infernal Grasp, I think I'm better off attacking. Get in for six. And we'll see if they chump. They do. And then I think I still play out my land, since if Swirling Sky ends up dying, then we want a lot of mana to be able to maybe replay some of our spells that we get back. Opponent had a Deadly Dispute, finds another Necrotic Fumes. And yeah, we don't want him to exile Swirling Sky necessarily, but uh, we'll put another threat on the board. And then Hive is no longer a huge threat since we've got our big creatures in play. Shambling Ghast can exile Swirling Sky and pay the ward. But as it does Subtles, we still have a Toxrill. So we'll see. Prismari Command, don't think we're destroying a treasure token, so we'll hang on to it to maybe draw and discard next turn. Bones at four, another Hive, and a Shambling Ghast, which we can kill. Just dies end of turn to Toxrill as well. Serpent can Chum Block with Hive. We get a slug, opponent drains us with massacre. So they're very close to dead. I could also draw by sacking the slug token, which I don't mind. Can maybe draw into a big score and still cast it here. Can be Fable of the Mirror Breaker, also quite decent. Maestro's Charm can drain opponents for three, so that plus Prismari Command is lethal. So there's probably no need for me to even attack and let him uh, chump, but... Yeah, burning our opponent out here. And then Prismari Command, deal two damage, and I guess we'll uh, make a treasure, sure. 
And there we have it. So yeah, opponent had some nice graveyard hate with the uh, early discard spell exiling our graveyard, but never really got a chance to exile our graveyard with Hive, which may have potentially uh, altered the outcome of this game if they were maybe trying to exile our creatures more aggressively. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's not going to cut it without any looting effects. This is better. And between Toxtril and the Arbiter we have to decide which one to keep, which one to get rid of. Since we have a power word kill for early interaction, I may be less worried about like an aggressive deck. And then I think Arbiter's going to be better than Toxtril actually drawing us extra cards. And it's also easier to hardcast at 6 mana as opposed to 7. So we can uh, turn to Power Word Kill, turn 3 Fable, and be on our way. Opponent Monorets with a turn 2 Requisitioner. Okay, so we want some black mana here, keep our red. And then, not sure if I want to kill the Requisitioner, we'll see if they have any creature pre-combats. Maybe a Face Breaker we want to kill instead. Opponent moves to combats. Do I kill Requisitioner? Can just trade for it for the Fable token, so I don't think so. Even though it hits pretty hard. And Zorn, okay. Kill that instead. So our opponent's pretty serious about treasures. Facebreaker undoubtedly in their deck somewhere. But um, I think it's time for Fable. And then I don't think I want to trade off my Shaman since attacking with it lets us Graveyard Shift next turn already. They may have their own burn spell here. In which case we can Maestro's Charm next turn. Untapped Shatter Skull Smashing for a gold span. Okay, that doesn't mess around. Does that change our plan at all? Could trade, and then next turn Maestro's Charm gold span. Still facing Den of the Bugbear, which is kind of sketchy. If I take 7, fall to 8. At least Arbiter stabilizes us somewhat. So I think I still take it. And hope the Shaman still survives. Okay, so... Discard Arbiter, and discard maybe another Fable, or just Arbiter, keep Fable. Don't think we'll have time to fully take advantage of the last Fable, so we'll get rid of it. And then we'll move to Combots. And we'll have to Graveyard Shift now, get back Arbiter. Discarding Xander's Lounge or maybe Titan since we won't be able to hardcast that anytime soon. Shrink down Goldspan. And yeah, it's still a precarious situation, but Arbiter may keep us in the game. And then a transformed reflection of Kiki Jiki, also quite synergistic with Arbiter, as we can make additional copies to shrink opposing creatures down. And they also kind of stack with their abilities. So the more the better. Shatter Skull Smashing number two kills Arbiter. And yeah, take three, opponent gets another treasure. So now we've got a Maestro's Charm to kill Goldspan. And a couple two twos to block with as well. Well, now we can play a backup Arbiter. Although that would require attacking. So then I have a Reflection back, Shrinking down Goldspan, and an Arbiter to block Den and Requisitioner. Technically, that's enough. So we'll go for it. But any Burn spell and we're probably toast here. So let's go ahead and play Arbiter. And then we would love another reanimation spell to bring back Titan of Industry to stabilize. Goldspan goes to minus two power. 
Maestro's Charm could also gain some life if we're desperate. Although I imagine killing Goldspan is going to be better. Opponent's got a lands. So do we see Den of the Bugbear get in the red zone? Still two cards in hand. And I don't think they'll have too many lands given that they played one smashing a couple turns ago. So most likely holding two spells. It's going to be their own fable. Alright, so they may not be attacking then. Which lets us untap with All Seeing Arbiter and Reflection. Requisitioner still attacking and Goldspan. Interesting. Not sure what to make of that. Maybe they have like a three damage effect, which would finish off Arbiter if I block Requisitioner. Do they want to give up Goldspan? Alright, put on three considers. And seems like they're just passing. I mean, if they have removal, they probably kill Reflection of Kiki Jiki at this point. Alright, it's just a Magda. So that will be a problem once they get to five treasures. Which, I guess with Treasure Vaults, that's definitely a concern. Okay, so now what? We have at least six mana to work with. Maestro's Charm can deal with Goldspan or Magda, which may be a bigger threat. I uh, can play another Fable, can draw with Indulgence. We probably want to activate Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which I may want to save until the opponent's turn to make an extra blocker as opposed to an attacker. And then the Arbiter would still, you know, trigger its ability, although we can also trigger it twice by making a copy, but then we have fewer blockers as a problem. So maybe I should Indulgence now to draw two, see what we pick up. And then pass with Maestro's Charm Reflection available. And then we can always response kill Magda if our opponent goes for like a Treasure Vault activation to make a bunch of treasure tokens. Opponent moves to combat, we will let them. And that's a pretty aggressive attack. So we'll use Reflection on Arbiter before blocks, I think. And I doubt our opponent has any instant speed removal to punish us. So that gets to draw. Discard. Maybe a land. Keep Toxrel to hard cast. And then those both trigger. Shrinking Goldspan, Shrinking Requisitioner, so we don't have to block and kill it. And then we can uh, go to blocks. And then I've got my eye on Magda with his Maestro's Charm potentially. Although Prismari Command can also deal with it. So that seems fine. And then I don't have to block Requisitioner, but I could if I want to. Yeah, maybe it's fine. This doesn't count as a treasure itself, so they would still be missing one treasure for Magda. Although waiting to play Toxtril to kill it, also an option to get an extra slug token. Bone lets damage happen. That's fine. Bone goes up to four treasures. And passes. So I don't think I want a response, otherwise they can activate Treasure Vault, get another dragon with Magda. That also means I wouldn't be able to play Toxtril unless I maybe attack with my Shaman to make an extra treasure, and that way I can activate Reflection at the very least and play Toxtril. Although the safest play may involve just getting back a Titan of Industry with Graveyard Shifts, and then we can copy that with Reflection. That sounds quite appealing as well. So really a ton of options here. Um, this we can play at instant speed, but I kind of want to do it now so we can use Reflection. And then what if they activate Magda in response? That's maybe a little awkward. So yeah, I guess we'll just attack with our Shaman and see what happens. Get that extra mana. Opponent maybe now tempted to activate Treasure Vault to make a dragon and block with, but we should have that covered. Okay, so in response, 
I can Prismari command, kill Magda, make a treasure. And that way I can still graveyard shifts and reflection once we get our extra treasure token here. And then should I do it now? Maybe get rid of Fable of the Mirror Breaker? Doesn't seem necessary. So, yeah, maybe we just pass. Don't think there's any instant speed burn spells that would kill me at 5 life. And we can essentially gain 10 at instant speed with shift and reflection copying our industry titan. Although possible with our opponent at 11 being more aggressive would have worked out too. Yeah, just uh, reanimate the titan of industry and take it from there. Opponent with a back of Magda, potentially a concern. Although, is it really? Yeah, we'll let that happen. Not sure what the top end's creature in their deck is. Aha, face breaker. Okay, so that can go digging with all those treasures. Or they can activate Magda if they'd like. But just a gold span's not enough. Not sure if they have any artifact, that's scary. But I guess we're about to find out. Right, just a Ziatora, the incinerator, which can sacrifice a creature, deal some damage, make some treasure. Uh, how do we want to answer it? I guess we just pass. And then... I guess there's no way for me to shrink down the creature after they sacrifice it. But best they can do is kill Reflection. And then we still get to uh, copy our Industry Titan, so I think we'll be fine. Opponent sacks their own Reflection to kill ours. In response, Graveyard shifts Titan of Industry. And then we'll make a Rhino. Can also put a Shield counter on Reflection, actually. To save it, and then copy Titan of Industry as well. And then we'll be able to attack with the token since we're already in the end step. So we get to untap with the Titan token, maybe another Rhino. And then we can use Reflection again if we'd like, maybe gain some life. And our opponent should be very much dead, even though we possibly could have killed them last turn already. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And our hand is promising as long as we pick up some expensive creatures and some reanimation spells along the way, but we get to dig pretty deep with Indulgence and then both Prismari Command and Maestro's Charm. Corpse Explosion as maybe a sweeper to catch us back up, facing what looks like the Esper Rafine deck. Turn to Aspirant, always scary. So we'll just pass with Tainted Indulgence available. Then we'll see if they have the turn 3 Rafine. Yep, so that'll grow the Aspirant as well, so they're quickly gonna get out of range from Corpse Explosion. And already out of range from Prismari Command. Can still maybe Maestro's Charm the Aspirants. Put on discards Meeting Massacre. Toxrill. We'll discard. So I could Corpse Explosion here just to wipe the board. And maybe that's necessary. Just so we don't fall too far behind. And then we can play a grindier game afterwards. Alternatively, we can take another hit and maybe wait on Corpse Explosion. But there's maybe a few cards that could punish us. If they get Scheming Seer above 7 Toughness. Or they maybe have some sort of counter spell or... Like a Spellbinder taking Explosion, you never know. Let's just play it safe. Turn 3, Board Wipe. Dealing with a, a 5 Toughness Ward 1 creature is not that easy, so... That worked out, but now we still need to win the late game. Kaito makes a Ninja. And a backup Toxrill is not bad. 
So I could Prismari Command the Ninja, or we can wait to kill Kaito instead, which is maybe better. And then I can make a Treasure Token to also Indulgence. Although, unless we draw into a reanimation effect, it's not that helpful, so maybe I'm better off keeping the treasure for later and just playing a tapped lounge. And then we can also just draw to discard to discard Toxrill. And uh, hopefully draw into a reanimation effect. Swirling Sky I'll keep in hand, and then maybe one land can go. Next turn play Fable plus Indulgence. And then if we draw land we can hard cast. If we draw a reanimation spell that's great too. Although our opponent does have Hive of the Eye Tyrant which could mess with our graveyard, so that's also an extra reason to hang on to some expensive creatures in hand. Return upon the tide. Opponent may be hanging on to a Wandering Emperor. But if I reanimate Toxrill, we will get at least one trigger, killing the ninja. And then have a nice 7-7 seven seven in play. Unless they have like a Void Rent to kill it. Vanishing Verse, also an option. So there's a few cards that punish this line of play. Whereas if I pass, what happens? Could Maestro's Charm Hive if that attacks. And Indulgence. Alternatively, we can just go for Fable, and then if they kill the Shaman token, so be it. And then we can still Indulgence. Although if they're holding Wandering Emperor specifically, going for Return is the best value play. And then I guess they could put a plus one counter on the Ninja, but that's okay. And then they may kill Toxrill next turn. Yeah, interesting spot. Not sure what the right answer is. Maybe just passing is fine. I can, I guess, foretell Return Upon the Tide and keep up Maestro's Charm as opposed to playing Fable. Opponent does nothing. Alright, so their hand must include some just spot removal spells like Vanishing Verse, Void Rend. So we'd love to kill this Hive if that attacks. Perfect. And we'll deal five. And then now their opponent is tapped out, going for return and getting back Toxrill immediately makes a slug. So I feel less bad if it gets answered. So patience paid off, I think. Toxrill triggers. If they let us untap, they must not have like an exile effect, because now I can sacrifice Toxrill to its own ability. But Wandering Emperor is still quite likely. So I'll just attack with a Slug. If they play it, they could make a 2-2 token and ambush it, so maybe I shouldn't even attack. And then, for now, play Fable, I guess. And then keep up Toxrill to maybe sacrifice itself if they try and exile it somehow. So we're not in a hurry. Can always tainted indulgence if her opponent taps out. They had the vanishing verse, interesting. Well, now I get to draw a card. Toxrill sacrifices itself. Possible they had a wandering emperor and were waiting to see if we attacked, and then decided to go for vanishing verse instead. Spider Queen, fair enough. So next turn we can discard Titan of Industry. And maybe one Swirling Sky, which we can now also reanimate. Graveyard Shifts can also bring back Titan, so we're in a nice spot. How do we want to deal with Spider Queen? Just bringing back Toxrill is not bad. And then I'll use Return. Get back Toxrill. That will clean up all the spiders. No need to attack. Get some more slugs. Could see a Metog Massacre in our future to clean up all the tokens. But then we'll still have a Toxrill. Depopulate to wipe the board. Okay. And Spider Queen draws. 
but now we're in the late game, Indulgence just a straight up draw two since we have the mana to hard cast most of our creatures. And uh, yeah, can play Swirling Sky, which if it just gets destroyed, I'm pretty happy. If they can exile it, it's maybe a little awkward. So do we want to go for Titan of Industry instead? Shield counter is not that helpful against exile effects. Can also reanimate Swirling Sky, or we can go for it end of turn with Graveyard Shifts. Maybe that's just the uh, answer. And uh, probably no need to Tainted Indulgence now. So I'll pass. Opponent does have another Hive available. But we can maybe reanimate whatever they target to try and exile. And then block it as well. Sanctuary Warden? Okay. So our opponent's Asper deck is quite top-heavy. And uh, let's start by drawing. And then Graveyard Shifts. Get back. Which is best? Can go for Titan or Swirling Sky. Spider Queen at 3 loyalty. Copying Titan is pretty satisfying with uh, Reflection, so we'll go with Titan. And then we can make a Rhino. And put a shield counter on maybe the Rhino token. Can hard cast Lord Xander as well. Make the opponent discard. And activates on Titan. Can make another Rhino. Put another shield counter somewhere. Maybe saving the reflection in case of another sweeper. And then two tramplers at Spider Queen. Guaranteed to take it out. So probably no point in attacking with a Rhino. Unless we just want to trade shield counters. Yeah, that seems fine. So your opponent's going to need another Sweeper, which they very well may have. But Meat Hook Massacre doesn't kill Titan of Industry. And Depopulate would still leave us with a Reflection and two Reanimation spells in hand. Could have also gained some life with Titan of Industry, but we're still at 15, so feel pretty safe. Alright, Massacre for 6 does wipe Lord Xander, but also kills their Angel. And we still have a Titan of Industry. And uh, yeah, can attack for 7, play a Swirling Sky. If we get back Lord Xander, then we don't make them discard anything, so that's not too appealing. So I guess Swirling Sky and then Foretell Return upon the Tide is fine. And just Swirling Sky by itself keeps looping back our reanimation spells. So a Sweeper's not going to deal with it. Scheming Seer. Now that we're in the late game, a lot less threatening. Okay. So how do we want to end this? I can bring back Toxril. If I... Bring back another Swirling Sky, we can maybe bounce their creatures, attack for 13. Don't know if there's guaranteed lethal in play somewhere. Swirling Sky getting back Maestro's Charm. Could also deal some damage, so I think we start by attacking. And then... Can maybe finish them off with a Maestro's Charm. And your opponent has seen enough. Awesome, so yeah, very interactive game against Asper, which is one of the most popular decks in Standard nowadays. And a timely corpse explosion in the early game set us up for success. And once we get to the late game, where we can start looping back our creatures from the graveyard and even hardcast some of them, it's pretty difficult for most decks to keep up. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.